Hey, how's it going everyone? This is YLAM here. In today's Fuji Friday, we're going to be answering an age-old question. And that is, which lenses should I get for my Fuji camera? This is a question which everybody asks, but there's really no right answer because everybody's a little bit different. Your purpose for using the camera can be different. So I'm going to answer it in a number of different ways. So I'm going to break it down into a couple of different categories. One for travel, leisure, you know, family stuff, hobbyist stuff. Second, for low light, because that's actually a very important category. And then the third one is going to be for the consummate professional, people that want to do this on a professional basis, whether for work or whether for something like a YouTube channel in which you really need to show professional quality. So that's how I'm gonna break down uh, these recommendations. Keep in mind though, they're still subjective. You know, they're based on what I've learned and based on my habits. Couple of caveats. Uh, number one, I'm not going to be covering any of the plastic lenses. There are several lenses in the Fuji lineup that are kind of what I believe subpar and I would never recommend them. So I'm really not going to cover them. This specific one is the 16 to 50 and then there is a, I believe a 50 to 230. They're really cheap plastic lenses that come with their entry level cameras. They're really good for what I consider to be like a throwaway camera. This camera, for instance, I do time lapses on them constantly because I'm not worried about losing it. So if it go, falls into the water, if it gets lost, if somebody steals it, this whole entire camera system right here is disposable to me. Whereas with my X-T20 or my X-H1, which is right here, I would not consider that disposable, so I wouldn't put them in those situations. Another caveat that I want to say real quick is that there are two lenses currently in the lineup that I don't have that are niche lenses that I really want to get. And that is the 80 millimeter macro for macro photography. But again, that's kind of a fringe lens. I don't really tend to use that all that much in the 100 to 400 just because I do take pictures of things that are really far away like airplanes on an air show. I like to have that reach, but I just haven't gotten around to getting them because uh, like for instance the 100 to 400 it's a pretty pricey lens so I'm just not going to get to that right away so let's go ahead and get into the lineup here are all the lenses that I currently have and I've kind of broken it down to what I think you should have uh, again very subjective number one that we're gonna go with is this one right here this is the 18 to 155 I thought it was going to be one of those lenses where I just wouldn't like it because it's a super zoom. It covers too much of a zoom range and it's just not going to be sharp enough or have the uh, light gathering ability or the lens quality or the picture quality that I'm going to want. That actually turned out not to be true. Uh, when I got the chance to use this for several events, several things that I really wanted to travel for, I found this to be uh, perfectly acceptable. It's a really nice lens. This lens is considered to be a super zoom, so what it's going to give you is pretty much the entire zoom range you would ever need for most situations, going from 18 to 135, which is 24 to basically 200 millimeters. That's an incredible zoom range. What I found with my pictures that I took just as a test, the sharpness between 18 and also to 135 is acceptable. It's perfectly good. The only caveat to this lens is that if you're a video first shooter for your cameras, it's not the greatest lens. I find it at the maximum zoom range of 200 millimeters. It's pretty hard to keep it steady even with the optical stabilization on. And also, it just tends to be a very bulky lens if you're taking it with, say, an X-T20. But overall, it's still a really great lens if you're shooting video first, just because you can use it on the short end to do vlogs and on the long end to take distant photography or distant video. So for me, this lens would be, if I only had one lens to bring with me in one camera body, I would choose to have this lens. If I choose to carry multiple lenses, this will never be in the lens lineup for me. The next two lenses that I want to talk about are what I consider to be the Fuji premium kit lenses. They're definitely better than any kit lens that I've ever seen and I love to have them with me when I'm out and about. The two that I'm talking about are the 18 to 55 and then the 55 to 200. They're great zoom ranges. They really complement each other really well. They're constructed really great and they're small enough to where you can carry them. And they're really not going to get into your way. The 18 to 55, this is what I consider to be the perfect vlogging lens. The 18 millimeters is definitely great for personal vlogging 
while getting out to 55 millimeters, which is enough to really cover that mid-range. Plus, it's very small, it's very compact, and it's image stabilized. This is the reason why I prefer this lens over to its bigger brother, the 16 to 55. That is a terrific lens. It is definitely a pro lens. The only issue that I have with that is that it is not image stabilized, which kind of limits what I want to do with it. Again, I am a video first shooter, so I care about video. If I grab a lens that isn't image stabilized, that kind of only limits me to the X-H1. I would not want to use it with the X-T20. That's the reason why I haven't invested in the 16 to 55 2.8. For my purposes, it's just a very limited lens. But by all means, if you want to step up to that quality, it's definitely worth having in your toolkit. I just choose not to have it. Now, the complementary lens to this, of course, is the 55 to 200. The 55 to 200 is probably my favorite zoom lens. And actually, I love having it on my X-T20. The reason why I love having it on my X-T20 is because it gives me such great zooming capabilities, but in such a compact and light form. It is one of the greatest combos that I have, and I really enjoy using it this way. It takes incredibly sharp pictures, gives you a great zoom range. You know, you're talking about a 300 millimeter equivalent with a 1.5 crop. Those two lens combos pretty much can cover everything you want to do. The only thing that you might want, of course, is the ultra wide, which is the 10 to 24 f4, but we'll talk about that in a second. What I found for both these lenses is that if you're a video first shooter, they work perfectly fine, they work really well, don't have any focusing issues, don't really have any quality issues. The light gathering is perfectly fine for everything I want to do for video. In low light situations, it will suffer a little, but what I found with the Fuji system is that even in low light, the grain looks very natural, it's very pleasant, and it's not something that I worry about, especially if I'm creating YouTube content. So I'm super happy with this lens combo because it's so light, yet it doesn't really sacrifice on any of the quality. The next set of lenses that I want to talk about is my low light lens set. Low light scenarios is definitely something you're going to have to gear after. So for my low light setup, I chose the 16 millimeter f1.4, the 35 millimeter f1.4, and then the 50 to 140 f2.8. The reason why I chose these lenses, obviously, is because of the really fast f-stops. Prime lenses generally do better in low light, and that's what I'm going after. 16 millimeter, that would be my ultra wide, a 24 millimeter equivalent. That usually covers everything that I need to do in terms of the ultra wide. Plus, at 1.4, it can capture a lot of light if I get into one of those scenarios. The 50 millimeter is just a great lens to have on your camera because it's a very natural focal length. You're going to be able to take pictures very quickly. You're going to be able to do snapshots because you're going to be able to gauge what that picture is going to look like just walking around. It's a lot of people's favorite focal length for a reason because it's very natural. People like the quality and the image that comes out of it. For telephoto, we're going to go up to f2.8 because it gives me such a great zoom range. There are prime lenses like the 56 millimeter f1.2 that can definitely gather more light than the 50 to 140. But the problem is, is that that's really not enough of a telephoto lens. I'd rather have something that gives me expanded capabilities, even though it doesn't gather as much light as an f1.2. This is just my personal preference, but this is what I would go with because the 50 to 140 is just in general a super great lens. So I really like that lens and I would highly recommend it for anybody who wants to put together a pro kit. Low light kits are definitely something that you're really going to have to work at to see what you're comfortable doing. Obviously with my low light kit, I'm going to have to move a whole lot more because I have more primes into this kit, but that's something that I'm very comfortable with. That's something that you're just going to have to find through experience for yourself. So the last kit that I want to talk about is probably going to be the most controversial and that is the kit that I would bring to me for like a paid event or something that I would do professionally. This is going to be very subjective. Keep in mind that when you put together a pro kit, it's going to be based off of the scenario you're going to put yourself into. You know, if you're going to be shooting in a very dark area, you're going to adjust the kit. You're going, if you're going to be outside and it's going to be in bright sunlight, you're going to adjust your kit. This is kind of the base that I start off with, and then I'll adjust it accordingly based off of the scenario I'm put into. 
So what I have here is the 10 to 24 F4, the 35 millimeter F1.4, and then the 50 to 140 F2.8. The reason why I chose this lineup is because it gives me the most flexibility at the very start. If I'm going into a scenario where I know nothing about the environment I'm going to be shooting in, this is going to give me the most flexibility. I have a super wide in the 10 to 24. It's a little bit slow at F4, but it's going to be fine for most scenarios. And if I need that super wide and I need to shoot it in a very dark area, I can always bring a tripod with me or use a tripod to make up for that F4. The 35 millimeter f1.4 i just really like that focal length it's one that i'm really comfortable with it's a very small lens so you're really not going to be noticed as much it's something that i really like having a compact camera with me if i'm taking pictures up close and personal and then finally the 50 to 140 for those extended zooms it's at f2.8 so it gathers plenty of light it's just all around a great zoom lens so long as you're willing to carry the bulk and the weight now, if I'm going to be going into a only low light scenario, I would probably swap out that 10 to 24 with the 16 millimeter that we were talking about before. If I know I don't need a telephoto lens, I might opt not to carry the 50 to 140, but instead carry the 55 to 200 just because it's lighter weight. And in an emergency case where I actually need a super zoom lens, I can grab that, put it out and shoot a picture and it will be perfectly fine. For video purposes, all of the lenses that I currently have in my lineup are great for video. The only one that's kind of iffy, I would say, is the 18-145, to which is not going to be in this lens lineup ever. So that's not really going to be a problem. So that was a quick rundown of all of the lenses that I would try to get for the type of scenarios that I'm putting into. Keep in mind, you know, having more lenses is definitely always better. But I understand everybody's on a budget, so you go with what you can get. Uh, for me personally, if you're going to be starting out, I would highly recommend starting out with the 18 to 55 and then moving into the 55 to 200. Even if you're going to go after more of the faster lenses like the 50 to 140, those two lenses are going to be great backups and they're going to be great compact lenses when you're in a hurry and if you want to actually have something light with you. And from there, you can actually do pretty much anything you want. Again, this is what I was thinking when I was purchasing my lenses. But keep in mind, though, I'm very aggressive on buying used lenses. So sometimes I would just buy things out of order just because a great deal popped up. And that's another recommendation I would have for you is that if you actually want a large selection of lenses, you might want to just buy the lenses that you want when, they, when a bargain comes up. Those are my thoughts. If you have any questions or if you want to actually leave your recommendations, I would definitely love to hear them. And until next time, have a great day.